Welcome back, YouTubers, to another NXT review with me, Mr. Park, and of course, as per usual, on behalf of the British Fist. Now, I remember last week's show, I said I really couldn't get into and it really wasn't that great of a show. Well, this week's show was better, in my opinion. It wasn't a great show by any means, but it was definitely a show that I was uh, a lot more into in general than I was with last week's show. And this had a lot to do with, you know, you had a promo segment in there, you had a pretty good main event match, you had some little storylines here brewing, you had a kind of look towards the future as to what we may be expecting from NXT, which in my opinion just, you know, just helped my overall buzz for this show, really. If you have any comments on this show or anything NXT related, please let me know, of course, as per usual, down in that comment section below. Let's get going. So we started off this show with Tyler Breeze squashing Angelo Dawkins. You know, I don't know why they even bothered having a match here when this was hyped up to be Tyler Breeze's huge announcement. You know, Instead of starting off NXT with a match like we do every single week, it seems, why couldn't we start off with a promo? It just would have been something different. I know this ended up being a promo, but why not just have the whole thing be a promo rather than have there be a match in there, which really at the end of the day is pretty pointless because Tyler Breeze has already beaten a guy like Mojo Rawley in about 20 to 30 seconds. So we don't really need to establish Tyler Breeze all that much now. We just need to do a bit more to aid this storyline between him and Adrian Neville for the NXT Championship. Now, the whole announcement turned out to be uh, that he submitted his music video to the Oscars. I imagine a lot of people out there were thinking he was going to announce when he was cashing in his title shot, but in good heel heat fashion, he did not do that. You had Adrian Neville coming out, and strangely enough, to what chance, which when you're a babyface is not necessarily a great thing, and makes fun of Tyler Breeze's mother. Yeah, that's right. People from Newcastle always seem to make fun of your mother. I know that for a fact. And then we get the typical like, baby face gets some offense in and the heel retreats. And I just wish WWE would just be a little bit more uh, you know, unpredictable here. You know, we see this so many times. The baby face gets some shots in. The heel retreats to the ramp. He looks down the ramp very, with a very angry look on his face. You know, there are times when I just wish WWE would get away from the generic booking they give, they give to these feuds. You know, why not do something a little bit different and have Tyler Breeze beat the living crap out of Adrian Neville? Why not get some real heat on this guy? Because God damn it, you need it! Because the crowd in half the time is cheering this guy and they were what chanting Adrian Neville. And I even heard a couple of boos as well because he interrupted the video that Tyler Breeze is going to do, which the fans were damn looking forward to. So it looks like you need to do a little bit more to get some heat on Tyler Breeze. I'm just saying. So in this one segment, I'm going to talk into pretty much everything that pertains to this NXT Tag Team Championship tournament they're going to be doing for the number one contendership to the Ascension's uh, longest reigning now 300 plus day Tag Team Championship reign. You know, so I I'm all fine with them creating a tournament to you know present a number one contender for the Ascension. I think it's a pretty good way to have a, a you know a team built up to eventually take those titles, which I think they will have to have to soon because the Ascension have pretty much got to be on Raw. The only issue I have here is while this tournament is a great idea, you didn't mention what tag teams are going to be in it. I mean, we know two tag teams that are going to be in it, and I guess you know in the back of our minds we know the Vordy villains are going to be in it. We know Big Cass and you know Danzo Enzo Amore are going to be in there. We know the Legionnaires are going to be in there, but that's not good enough NXT. You need to tell us who's going to be in it. Hell, have a graphic there or something with the four teams on each side of the pyramid and just tell us who the fucking teams are. You know, if you're going to hype this up to next week, give us the information we need to be able to look forward to it. Just having a tournament with, you know, not knowing who's in it isn't going to get people very excited for it. Just saying. I say that a lot. I'm just saying. But it, one of the minor storylines I have on this show was between Mojo Rawley and Bull Dempsey. And it seems like they're going to be partners to go after the greater goal, which is an NXT Tag Team Championship shot. And this is really being done, so I imagine they'll lose one of their matches and they're pretty much going to feud later. I imagine that's the only reason why they're doing this. And, you know, they faced a new tag team in the Mechanics. Uh, I, think that, I think they had Scott Dawson in it and someone else I wasn't too familiar with. And the Mojo Rawley and Bull Dempsey, well, mainly Bull Dempsey, uh, you know, beat the Mechanics. So the Mechanics lose on their NXT debut. That's a very good way of establishing a new tag team there, NXT. So, as for like predictions as to who's going to win this tournament, the Vordy villains, maybe Big Cass and Enzo Amore, sure as hell isn't going to be Mojo Rawley and Paul Dempsey. I know for a fact that that isn't going to happen because they're pretty much in there to forward on a storyline between what's going to probably be between them two for a little while. One of my big gripes about the show last week was that the women's match was really, really disappointing. It was incredibly disappointing. After all this build, this logical storyline, the two characters going at it, 
The match really disappointed, which, you know, really irked me. But this week, we had a match between uh, Charlotte and Becky Lynch, which thankfully was just a lot better and a lot easier for me to get into for various reasons. You know, thank God they dropped the typical Irish dancing type gimmick with Becky Lynch. And they've given her, like, a rocker gimmick, which is better, I guess. I saw the commentator, or I heard the commentators, excuse me, saying that, you know, she reminds them of her a lot. She reminds them a lot of Lita, which is always a very good comparison. I'd very much also like to know what's going on with Charlotte's character now. You know, I guess she's some kind of tweener. You know, I don't really know what's going on. She's smiling for the crowd, but then she does a backstage segment with Bailey where she's very condescending. So I'm not really sure exactly what they're going for with Charlotte's character there. But the main thing about this is even though the match was short-ish and Becky Lynch didn't get the win here, you know, Charlotte is the NXT Women's Champion, so you kind of have to give her the win. It was still just a hell of a lot better and a lot easier to get into than the last week's women's match, which immediately brings this up, in my opinion. And we had a backstage segment after this where Bailey and Charlotte kind of had a little confrontation. And I think it's about time that Bailey and Charlotte feud for the NXT Women's Championship and finally finish off the feud they should have had ages ago when Charlotte turned on her best friend Bailey to join the BFFs. They never really finished off that storyline. And I think this would, better late than never, I guess, would be an appropriate time to actually build up a storyline between these two. You don't even have to have Bailey win. You can have Charlotte win in the in the you know the ultimate match between these two, and Bailey would still come out looking strong because of it, because she would be going after the NXT Women's Championship. You know, that's all really. So this could be quite an interesting storyline going forward. I hope they go to their history and actually talk about maybe the turn from the BF, you know, the best friends to the BFFs, etc. You know, whether they'll do that or not, I don't know, but I hope they do. Number one, thank God Devin Taylor isn't doing all the interviews anymore and JoJo's doing them. At least she's a little bit better at talking. Also, they did a video package for a Xavier Woods versus CJ Parker match next week. You know, hands up if you thought that a Xavier Woods CJ Parker feud would get a video package hyping up to next week's match. You know, so let, let me get this straight, WWE or NXT. You're going to hype up a match between Xavier Woods and CJ Parker with a video package, but you're not going to tell us who's in the number one contendership tag team tournament, which starts next week. You know, can you please get your priorities straight here, WWE? Please. I really enjoyed the main event between Adam Rose and Tyson Kidd. I just felt the characters just really meshed together really well. You've got Adam Rose, who's this real fun guy that's all about partying and, you know, being a rosebud and not liking lemons and, you know, the bunny and the entrance and everything. And then you've got Tyson Kidd, who lately has been built up as a very serious character who is really trying to fight, you know, between with himself and his wife, etc., and being just a very serious character. So these two characters, in my opinion, meshed quite well when they were in a match. And I think maybe before Adam Rose was, you know, brought up to the main roster to inevitably fail, and actually, you know, of course he kind of did fail, hence why he's back on NXT, his home. You know, maybe a feud of a guy like Tyson Kidd, who's been in the WWE, you know, proper before on Raw and SmackDown. Maybe a feud with a guy like that may have helped him, you know, be a bit more of a success in WWE. Because when these NXT guys work with the guys on the main roster, they probably learn a lot more than, let's say, if they're working with another NXT guy. Which is essentially what Adam Rose was doing, you know, throughout his tenure in NXT, his short tenure in NXT, before he got called up to the main roster. And this was a, you know, this was a pretty good match. You know, like this, got, this got a lot of time. I think, you know, we've seen Adam Rose in a lot of squash matches and a lot of short matches, which are really all about highlighting him. So they've built up the character enough now where we can have a good competitive match. You know, Adam Rose got the win here. I was quite surprised. It was just nice to see Adam Rose, and we know how good the Leo Kruger guy was in the ring. You know, but now Adam Rose is a gimmick, which is very entertaining, and he can bring his wrestling now to that gimmick and really help get that gimmick over and be a good wrestler in the process. It was good to see Adam Rose in a competitive match, especially with a Tyson kid. And like I said, I was a little bit surprised Adam Rose got the win here, you know, because I thought maybe Tyson Kidd would be a bit more of a priority for NXT right now. But, you know, the finish itself even kind of fit Tyson Kidd's character. So I wasn't really all that bothered about that. You know, Tyson Kidd got distracted by Natalia on the outside. It seems like they're trying to pinpoint some real tension between them two now, which, you know, I really don't like to see on my NXT show. But there you go. But like I said, the finish fit Tyson's character. It allowed Adam Rose to get a much needed win, in my opinion, after his momentum has just faulted. And also helped to, you know, project the tension between Natalia and Tyson Kidd, which it looks like they're going with now. So I thought this was a very satisfactory way 
to end this week's edition of NXT. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I thought this show was a lot better than last week. A pretty good show, in my opinion, mainly because the flow of the show was just helped by the fact, you know, we had a promo segment in there. We had a lot of backstage segments trying to hype up to stuff during the night and also for next week as well. We had a very satisfactory main event, a much better women's match than last week. So there was... There was, excuse me, there was a lot of things there, you know, which really helped make this show a lot better and a lot easier for me to get into this week. That is all I'll say on that subject. If you have any thoughts or queries or anything regarding this week's edition of NXT, you know where to put them, down in that comment section below, right near to where my crotch is, pretty much, as I've said previously. And that seems to be a popular quote, so I'm going to say it again. Thank you very much for watching this week's edition of NXT. And make sure you go subscribe to my personal channel, Mr. Parkin01, where I'm doing some podcast-related audios. I recently did one with Fred Thomas, who's also known as CC Network, youtube.com forward slash Crazy on YouTube. And we did a whole talk about TNA and, you know, whether it's going to go out of business and was Vince Russo to blame and other such things with regarding TNA. It's about 50 odd minutes long. It's a very good listen, in my opinion. Go check it out. Make sure you go subscribe to my podcast, which is www.youtube, no, www.youtube.com forward slash Mr. Parkin01. Enough with the shameless plugs. I'm going to go to bed.